welcome back to my channel. My name is Betsy. I say welcome back because uh, I know you subscribed, right? <laughs> you subscribed? No? You, you haven't, uh, you haven't, uh, you haven't subscribed. So, I know you're watching this in full screen. I, it's Without a doubt, you're, you're definitely not doing anything else. Like, I have your full undivided attention. Just um, go down to the, uh, the, the little rectangular minimize, yeah, that. But yeah, good, good, good. And then just, just down there, uh -huh, you'll see little subscribe, S-U-B, S-C-R-I-B-E, -E, subscribe. Today, I wanna talk about my Bernie friends, Maria. I think one of my subscribers, but I'm not sure. Maria, you better subscribe. She asked me about these things on my wall. What are these things on the wall behind me? Please talk about them. These are staghorn ferns. I have two types, Platycerium bifurcatum and Platycerium alicorn back here, all the way to the, to your right. My left, your right. You can see that I keep mine mounted on wood. I don't know the type of wood. It was in the discount bin and it's planted in sphagnum moss. The reason for that is that it's an epiphyte. In its natural environment, it grows on the sides of trees. It's a fern, it has fronds, like a fern. It has two types. It has a basal frond, which looks like a kidney, and these wrap around the tree and kind of secure the fern to the tree, and they also create a cup at the top back of the fern to capture any nutrients or rainwater trickling down the tree. And then it has fertile fronds, and these are the fronds that release spores so that they can reproduce. Because it seems like a complicated contraption, people have the impression that these are difficult to take care of. Not the case. Super easy. They do really well in our homes. They prefer temperatures between 65 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like 16 to 27 degrees Celsius. They can't withstand really cold temperatures, like 30 degrees Fahrenheit, negative one Celsius. They prefer things on the warmer side though, kind of like you and me. And they love high humidity. Mine do fine in my apartment, which is usually around 50% humidity. It's a little bit on, you know, more humid side, but uh, they can withstand really dry, arid climates, which I'll get into in a little bit. They prefer bright and direct light. If you consider where they're coming from, they're living on the sides of trees just under the canopy, so they prefer indirect light. If light conditions are too low, they will suffer. They really need bright and direct light. And if you leave them roasting in a south or west facing window in the hottest hours of the afternoon sun, they're likely going to shrivel up and they won't do so well. Mine do really well in rooms with east facing windows. I think they would also do really swell in south facing windows or west facing windows. North facing windows might not provide them with enough light. And like I said, you don't wanna leave them roasting in the hottest hours of the afternoon sun if you do have a south or west facing window. Since it's an epiphyte, it will definitely do best if it's mounted like this in some sphagnum moss, or you could keep it in a really chunky soil mix with a lot of orchid bark or perlite just to make sure that the roots get plenty of aeration. The problem with keeping it in a pot is that these, these basil fronds are gonna grow. I mean, they get really big. I'll show you a close-up of my one of my biggest ferns. They get really big and they'll just grow over the edges of the pot completely and then it makes it really hard to water them or fertilize them. So it's really best to keep them mounted like this as they would be in their natural environment. When it comes to watering, very simple. I just squeeze the sphagnum moss every few days to see if it's drying out. And once it becomes dry and kind of crispy, I'll take them off the wall, stick them in the bathtub, shower them down with the shower head, make sure that this is real, real wet. And then I let them drip dry for about an hour I'm gonna take them back out and put them on the wall, and I'm done. Some other tips, they can get huge. Huge! Really, like hundreds of pounds, like they weigh more than me. Huge. Just yesterday I posted in one of the houseplant groups on Facebook uh, some pictures of my staghorn friends asking everyone else how they feel about them, and some people posted some massive specimens. Some just, just some of the biggest staghorn friends I've ever seen. It was amazing. So earlier I was saying, Cat is driving me nuts. They really prefer warm, humid. I need to get rid of my cat. There are gigantic hornets outside the size of birds and they land on my balcony and my cat likes to sit at the window and <laughs> chatter. I was saying earlier that staghorn ferns prefer warm, humid conditions, but some of them are actually adapted to xeric conditions. Xeric meaning dry, arid, desert-like climate. Platycerium vichii, for example, is known for exercising crassulation acid metabolism photosynthesis, which is a mouthful. 
Whereas most plants carry out the entire photosynthesis process during the day, plants that exercise crassulation acid metabolism close their stomata during the day. And there's, their stomata is like their pores, right? And it's what they use to absorb CO2. Most plants absorb CO2 during the day, but these plants do it during the night. So during the hottest hours of the day, they close their pores to save themselves. And then as soon as night falls, they open those pores and they absorb CO2 and store it in their cells. And then when daylight comes again, they close the pores up and they use that stored CO2 to carry out photosynthesis in the sunlight. That's a really simple way of explaining crassulation acid metabolism photosynthesis. I won't get too deep into it because I am not a scientist. You might be wondering how I got my staghorn fern onto this piece of wood, and I will tell you. I'm gonna share two videos. One of them is from Logi's Plants, and one of them is from Shaylin, Sheslin. I'm not sure how she pronounces it. I wanna say Shaylin because I live in France, and that's how you would say it in French. But maybe she doesn't. Maybe it's Sheslin. I don't know. She has a really good tutorial for mounting your staghorn fern onto wood, and I used her tutorial, so I'll share it in the description below. I installed some tiny screws on a piece of wood in a circle. I put some sphagnum moss on the wood in the circle. I put the fern on the sphagnum moss, covered it up with some more sphagnum moss. And then I took fishing line and twisted it around the screws and across in a crisscross pattern to adhere the fern to the block of wood. Now you can see it's quite firmly in place. And that's it. It was very easy. I'll show you a close-up of the staghorn ferns on my living room wall. You can see the sphagnum moss. I can't see the screws. Oh, here we go. You can see one of them up here. You can see the fishing line a little bit. On this one, you can see the basal fronds really well. Those are the things that look like kidneys. So that's what they use to adhere themselves to the side of the tree. And that will eventually just kind of take over this entire block of wood. It'll just get bigger and bigger. And these are the fertile fronds. This is what it uses to release spores and reproduce. And here's the little one. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below. I will definitely get back to you. This was a suggested video, so. You know I'm a woman of my word, and if you haven't subscribed, feel free to subscribe. I, I try to put out at least one video every week, sometimes more, about plants, and if you like that kind of thing, subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, Betsy Begonia. I post interesting information about plants on there, polls, just have a fun discussion with people about plants. And you can also follow me on Instagram, very active on social media. So thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. I'm trying to remember what sound deer make. I can only remember that scene in Tommy Boy with David Spade and Chris Farley and they have a deer in their backseat or something and the, the deer wakes up and like David Spade screams and Chris Farley screams and then the deer is like, ah!